All right, Jared here. Um, discuss what was involved on doing this GX270 carburetor conversion on my GX200 clone, aka the Predator 212. Um, got a you know 308 cam in this thing. Um, billet connecting rods, chrome molly push rods, um, the Gen 2 Forge Champion rockers, boat loop, still gravity fed tank, all that, but. And I'm still I'm running into a surging issue, which I think I'm gonna need to put a pulse pump. Even though I, I'll probably actually put an inboard tank, and you know, being it's on a boat, and uh, use it to pull from there and fill it. But I think I'm actually going through the fuel so fast that it's dropping. The level in the bowl is dropping so quick that it's you know coming in and out, and just that's why I'm getting this like around 5,500 RPMs. I'll get a surge, and the engine RPMs will you know go kind of can't really keep a consistent um air fuel ratio and good power there but so i got to figure out what's going on there but i mean everything else seems to be working well um so i was reading that you can do the 39 gx 390 um cc carburetor swap on these using these adapter plates from nr racing um and then i also found i can't remember where affordable carts they listed that you could do a direct bolt-on to a, a 390 carburetor to a uh, like 240 or 270 cc engine. So I figured, you know, I must be able to use a 390 adapter and put a 10 horsepower 270 cc carburetor on there, which I did. Um, use the adapt or like intake adapter. Um, this also works on the 240, the 270. The 390 should work on the 310 Predator too, but um, ended up getting you know ordering a GX270 carburetor, getting the 390 adapter plate, and if you notice this back plate here is a little thicker. Um, that one's actually a 15 degree plate, so it'll sit the carburetor like this when you're using a um, angle motor plate on a go kart. But since we're keeping it straight, we want to keep the bowl level on this one because um, it's on a mud motor. You have to use the second adapter, which straightens it out um, with a little bit of permatex in between. And then you can use your GX200 studs, put the carburetor on, and put the velocity stack on there, and that's good. But with these carburetors, the throttle linkage um, on the 390 will be in the front, so it needs to be a pulling style. And you can, there's a guy done one where he has the throttle return springs this way. And he ended up making a bracket that comes out and route the cable around so the cable would actually pull the throttle open. Um, instead of doing that, I ended up taking the throttle shaft out since the plastic um, lever here was broken on this one anyway. So I made my own um, lever and hooked it up, you know, been a piece of clothes hanger to keep my throttle re um, linkage just like it was. And because I like my dual return spring setup that I did. So. I can still set my idle speed here and you know wide open throttles there and I got two return springs so if one breaks I'm still got still got a secondary to um, make sure it returns and I don't get stuck wide open throttle um well I mean besides that I had to cut my own gasket I like making my own gaskets out of this thicker material anyway than the cheap paper gaskets they give you so there's one back here and then as I installed each one made sure the intake valve was closed and uh match ported them so I can increase the velocity there to keep a better fuel signal. Um, I also, because I didn't want to run like a catch can setup or just open breather dumping oil into the water, I tapped this out for a 1 8th MPT to a 4 in adapter with a piece of push lock hose and the valve cover so I'll just recirculate or um, pretty much the engine will just suck in the uh, crankcase fumes that come out of the valve cover breather here. But uh, I mean little bit involved this isn't really a real super simple straight bolt on carb swap if you can do that linkage that will save you doing this i just decided to you know make my own lever grind it down weld it on um grind these till i got my good set point on the uh idle speed screw and then you know kept grinding and ch checking the lever till i had a perfect wide open throttle you know where the throttle blade is perfectly nine degrees all the way open um then I ended up using the little fuel filter they came with and notched the front cover here to fit it and uh, tied that in there tight. So 
And then I decided to get rid of the vent I had here coming back into the um, intake. And this is just free venting. It'll dump down, you know, when the motor's turned around, it'll dump into the hole if it ever were to bleed over. And there also is a little check valve under here. And I wanted to keep figuring that I was not getting the fuel feed that I needed to the bowl. I figured the gas tank probably had to be vented better. And reading that these had a valve in them, I ended up taking, you know, two screwdrivers and some rags and slowly prying that out. And there was a little, I'll go grab it over here. Um, so you had this retainer underneath of it and a very light spring. And, you know, that kept it seated. Um, and I guess if there was enough pressure from being out in the sun and pressure building up in the gas tank, usually what an EVAP system is for on like a modern fuel injection car, this would be able to push open and let the fumes out. So I ended up removing all that. So that's, that's a free vent now. But I'm still running into this surging issue. So I th I'm wondering just because this carb and the engine trying to run it up to 8,500 RPMs, I'm running to the surging around like 55 to 6,000 RPMs. So I'm wondering if I just don't have the volume to feed, keep this bowl fuel or bowl filled um, with this setup. So may have to do a pulse pump to get more volume there. Um, probably just take it off where I have my 1 8th MPT tap where the governor used to, rod used to come out of the block um, and get a good pulse fitting there and maybe try that. But I was hoping to fix that with these. Uh, I ended up, if you can see, tapping these out for holly air bleeds and there's 41,000 orifices just like the carb was to begin with um, and when you reduce the size you should re in increase the signal on that circuit this one being the low speed idle and pilot circuit and this one being the high speed circuit over on the closer to the on off valve for the carburetor um, but I found that I was getting more fuel at higher throttles through the emulsion tube out the middle and everything um, or throttle positions for that matter but it actually seen the surging get worse so it's should be pulling out of the bowl faster so I'm pretty sure that my surging issue is just there's not enough volume and the fuel can't fill that bowl fast enough I might try uh, this float has a over like the regular 200 or GX200 carburetors has a metal tab where you can adjust the float level so I was thinking about adjusting the float level a little higher and maybe that'll open the valve um, further and get a little more volume in the bowl. Um, we'll see if that helps, um, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to be running into I need some way to supply more fuel to this carburetor to make sure that bowl stays fuel in those higher RPMs. But yeah, besides, you know, you can make a linkage. I ended up using the 1 8th MPT port you would use for a pulse fitting going to a vacuum line to the... Uh, wideband air fuel ratio and vacuum slash boost gauge I have for tuning carburetor cars but uh so I could get the idle right and I got a nice decent idle on it um with the highest vacuum I can get but with this little engine and this carburetor you get a harsh pulse you really can't you know with a one cylinder it's really hard to get a uh, consistent like tight or vacuum reading that stays really stable so you're going to see some pulse there um yeah, and they don't recommend with this using the intake pulse fitting when you run like a really radical cam with a lot of overlap stuff like that and i mean this cam when i did the math on the 308 cam it almost has like 40 degrees of overlap so probably won't be using that for actual pulse fitting i'll probably go with the uh one off the crankcase but and then with this velocity stack if you already had one and the air filter you know one of the pod filters if you already had one on your gx200 it's the same diameter and you can use that same filter. You don't have to go um, buy another one if you decide to go like 390, 270, 240 carburetor on your GX200. So if you already had one of those intakes, you can reuse it. So that's a good thing. But that's about it. I mean, really wasn't too hard. A little time consuming. Ended up doing a, you know some port work on this carburetor. It's like a 19.75 millimeter bore at the throttle. And then it's... um. It was a 0.635 bore at the Venturi. So I ended up knocking the Venturi out to 0.670, um, which is just like the stock appearing board carburetors. Um, 
they recommend the 0 .670 bore Venturi carburetor with um, engines running 75,000 and above and I'm planning on running up to 85 here so I ended up knocking about to the same so figured start with the 10 horsepower carb better than that little um, GX200 carb you know and I increased the and then I also thin the throttle shaft blade so I wide up and throttle you got a little more volume there a little more velocity should increase the signals um, on the fuel circuits such as the um, idle circuit and pilot circuit or well they're both the same circuit but you know increase the signal back there so it'll pull from the transition holes in the idle um, mixture screw a little better there so what else I mean that's really it there's anything else I haven't covered not too bad of a swap you have to redo the linkage if you don't decide to weld on a different lever like I did but works pretty good would good wide open throttle simple linkage setup shouldn't fall apart should be reliable but I give a little start just to show you all how it runs and uh, it's not really dirty in here so I'm not worried about the uh, air filter right now Seems to be a lot more responsive with the 22,000s pilot jet also, and the uh, air bleeds are the same orifice size, they're just adjustable now that I can swap them out with larger or smaller ones um, by using Holly ones. Um, so, and the actual orifice on the needle and seat or the float valve is 70,000s on this GX270 carb over the 51,000s on the GX200 carb. So. I figured I'd get a little more flow there and that might take care of the surging issue if that's my issue but I think it just I can't this gravity feed from the tank isn't enough so we might try a pulse pump later um, besides that I've just got to play with it and get it right alright guys take it easy bye alright guys right after I made that video there um, I just thought of something so you have your main jet pulling out of here, you know, your bowl would sit on the carburetor. This is the old GX200 one too, but um, this nut or bolt is going to hold the bowl up in there. But the only two ways it can pull fuel to that main jet and through the main jet to the pilot circuit and high speed circuit through the emulsion tube and everything is through these two holes. Well, I was thinking maybe these holes need to be bigger to supply the enough fuel to it um, so I ended up taking a drill bit which was which one here I think a number 30 and uh, knocking that hole out all the way through started the thing up um, which I don't re recommend free revving but I could get the surge around 55 to 6 free revving um, after I knocked those holes out not getting the surge so doesn't seem the gravity feeding issue is the problem. Um, it seems like I'm getting enough volume there through the bowl. So if you ever run into that, it's making these bigger isn't going to hurt anything because the jet size is the, you know, metering um, piece for that, you know, whole system anyway. So if you make those bigger, you'll just make sure that gets more consistent flow at higher RPMs. If you're, you know, ungoverned and make sure you're using a billet rod and bit. Um, billet flywheel when you do that but that made a huge difference we'll see what it actually does in the water if I have to knock it out more um, but real simple just knock the thing out to almost twice the size don't go so thin that it's um, you know you don't have a lot of material in there and you risk cracking it but that seemed to do the trick so cool easy just gotta think about things and give them tries and carbs were only 12 17 bucks for these aftermarket ones so you know if you mess up it's really not that expensive to get another one and try again so all right guys take it easy bye